Hey guys, that's your command today. We Shadow Legends with another champion guide here on the channel. We are approaching 200 champion guides, guys. We're getting there. We're getting there. Only about 800, 900 to go. I'd say we're uh, one fifth of the way through. Not even. Anyway, guys, we have a campaign farmable rare champion that is definitely worth your investment, especially if you're running a clan boss unkillable team, but in more use cases than just that as well. And it is Eris. So as I mentioned, she the first thing you need to know about Eris is she's campaign farmable rare. Uh, it's in stage six here. So on uh, Queen Ava's stage, the Palace of Avaria, we have a little champion right over here. Eris, Force Affinity, High Elf Champion. She looks pretty cool aesthetically. I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan, I would say. Uh, a rare attack champion. On her A1, Bullseye attacks one enemy, grants an extra turn if the target is killed. It actually has decent multipliers as well, a three multiplier on that A1. So not too bad for damage. And in rare only secret rooms or in faction wars, you'd actually be surprised at how many champion or how many yeah i guess uh, opposing champions she's killing and getting that extra turn which is really really nice on her a2 she's got a great a2 we are removing a random buff from all allies and then a hundred percent chance when book does require books as champion 100 percent right 100 percent chance to place an increased speed big version from all allies for two turns so we get a big version to increase speed and a remove one random debuff from all allies now in clan boss especially there's only one debuff ever at a time on one ally. It's a stun. So she's got it covered. I mean, sometimes you don't need the full cleanse. There's a lot of champions out there with two random debuffs, like uh, Gerda Bogbrew, for example, right? Sometimes, uh, often more than you'd think, you only need one or two cleanses, you know? So don't be so discouraged or immediately dismiss a champion just because they're only removing one or two debuffs, depending on where you're using that champion, right? So anyway, one random debuff will cleanse the stun and place an increased speed all on a three-turn cooldown. We have Avenger, a passive, counter-taxes of the attacker when an ally is attacked. So that makes her a great candidate for the set that we're going to be using her for uh, in today. She also brings speed in dungeons by 16%. So for the early game, considering she is a campaign farmable champion, she's not a bad bet to put alongside your Kales, Aethels, Galex, whoever you're starting out with, right? You're lucky enough to get an Apothecary or something like that. You could use either the Defense Aura or the Speed Aura in dungeons so she's got that as well decent champion and i would say a pretty pretty solid champion for uh early game progression early stage dungeon progression in the game of course her claim to fame is rare only secret rooms and of course clan boss which i will show you my clan boss team where i use eris in today's video so let me see have i used her recently i have not uh let me go ahead and pull her up using the old handy dandy champion filter it's kind of new in the game at the time of this recording, so I know this is not going to age well for those of you watching years in the uh, in the future. Like, okay, champion filter, who cares? I care. Uh, there we go. Air, boom, hide, and there she is. Wow, it's magic. All right, so here's Eris. Of course, you guessed it, guys. She's in a toxic set, right? She's so good in toxic sets. It's a 75% to a chance to place the weak version of poison for two turns. Uh, they gave toxic set a, bo a, bo a, bo a buff, a boost, a buff, a boost, a boost, a buff. <laughs> they gave it a buff like, uh, uh, I don't know, a year ago from the time of this recording. It used to be only 50% chance. Now it's 75% chance. It's the weak version of poison. But think about it, guys. All those counterattacks from Avenger are going to have a 75% chance of placing a poison. Now, poisons, even the small version, does a ton of damage against bosses, specifically the clan boss. So I think that Toxic is by far and away the number one set to have on this champion. Uh, I would even put it on her for non-clan boss, because you don't have that many champions out there in the game that just are perfect fits for Toxic anyway. So I think it's a good use case for your Toxic gear that you might have lying around, you know? Uh, so I love Toxic on this champion. Now listen, the first thing you'll probably notice is she's very, very fast at 261 speed she does not have to be that fast she is speed tuned for my particular clan boss team if you want to find your own clan boss team that best suits where you are on your account go ahead and check out deadwood jedi deadwood jedi.com and he has every clan boss comp you could possibly imagine everyone including eris as well i shouldn't say everyone there's always new ones every day but a lot of the popular ones including eris so because she's in clan boss and that's what I want to focus on primarily for, for the rest of this video is clan boss. Obviously, anything that I tell you guys 
for the most part, is going to be able to pertain to anywhere. If I have this build on her, she's going to be fairly useful pretty much anywhere in the game. Uh, I the only thing I would say, though, is going for a little bit more survivability if you're playing on a non-unkillable team, you know, in dungeons, anywhere, right? You might want to prioritize more HP and more defense on this champion. The good news is, despite her low HP base, her defense at 1,000 is not bad. It's actually really decent for a rare champion, okay? So it's fairly easy to scale that. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I have her at 104 and 115 on crit rate, crit damage. And... I mean, we don't need accuracy on this champion at all because remember, guys, accuracy is not required to land anything from any artifact set. So accuracy does not matter on this champion. In terms of artifacts on her, we have resistance. I just wanted the speed, honestly, on the banner here. Uh, I have HP on the amulet. I have HP on the ring. Now, I will say that I think we might be able to get her out of this HP amulet. We just want to make sure her HP isn't so low that she's getting targeted and aggroing that stun. Of course, she can't cleanse herself, right? So anyway, we have speed. I'm not going to mess with my build. It works, gets the job done nice and easy. Uh, speed on the boots. We have accuracy on the chest. But again, we don't need accuracy at all. This was a lazy, not lazy, it just was what it was. It was to mid-max her, or to get her speed exactly where we needed at 261. Frankly, getting four pieces of toxic set and still hitting the speed that I needed to hit, which was, again, exactly 261, I couldn't do it. My toxic gear wasn't good enough. So I had to throw on an accuracy chess piece. Now, I will say, I have crit rate on the, uh, as you can see, on the gauntlets. I will say that her damage is significant and it's based on attack. So let's just look together here because I haven't looked in a while. If I can find a, a, an attack percentage with 14 speed in my, uh, in my equipment on any champion, let's see. Crazier things have happened. But I imagine I didn't have it. Otherwise, I would not. I'm going to put priority stats at speed to kind of help us out here. And primary stats we already have. Okay, so let's see. Plus 12, plus 3, plus 2. Oop! Oop! Oh, we got it, guys. We got it right here. Uh, okay. Sorry, uh, Dark Kale. We have a new chess piece. Pretend you didn't see anything or hear anything so far throughout the video, guys. Now we have our attack all the way at 3,200. Because, listen, on an unkillable team, and this applies to any champion on an unkillable team. It, it doesn't matter who they are, right? Uh, it, it doesn't, I mean, they're unkillable. They're not going to take any damage. HP and defense, uh, other than just the setup, if you have one on your team, like the first couple turns... It doesn't matter how much they have or how little they have for that matter. Now, of course, a lot of us are going to be using champions in multiple different areas of the game. So we do want them to have decent stats. But again, if you're just trying to min-max your damage, we'll go with attack percentage. It doesn't matter if she's not a nuker or if she is a nuker or whatever. Anyway, uh, back to the... Uh, so Phantom Touch, we have, again, trying to min-max our damage, right? So we have Phantom Touch as our blessing. I would say that's the most popular blessing for this champion for a clan boss by far. However, I will point out that... We have uh, uh, Indomitable Spirit, a uh, chance of blocking stuns, sleeps, and fears. You can consider that as well if that's an issue for you. But again, I think for the majority of people are going to go Phantom Touch on that blessing. Okay. Now for Masteries on this champion, guys, we're keeping it pretty simple here. We came down offense. We came all the way down for War Master. Uh, cycle of Violence, uh, it's never going to be an issue. We're never going to exceed 30% of the damage on Clan Boss, but it's really a useless mastery on this champion. Uh, we can't go Cycle of Magic either, because basically for Clan Boss, as you guys know, we don't want to mess with the uh, her, her turn meter at all, right? Or turns at all, or the cooldowns of anything at all. Meaning, you know, we have... There's no real use case uh, here on... I don't know... I mean, Sniper's good, again, for the, uh, it brings that up to an 80% on, on the landing, the toxic, the poisons from the toxic set, and we can extend the duration as well, vis-a-vis -vis the Master Hexer, so those Masteries are good, uh, because she's counterattacking so much anyway, I like going Support Tree on this champion, versus going down and picking up Retribution, so that, I kind of prefer this, or this route, plus we get the extra speed from Lore of Steel, which helps out as well, uh, I will say, most importantly is tier six war master you get extra damage from her right uh war master really adds up with all those counterattacks, all those a1s uh but we don't want to get 
rapid response. We don't want to get arcane celerity. Uh, most importantly, anything, again, like obviously we're not going to get timely intervention or anything like that, right? But we do not want to get anything that's going to mess a presser, that's going to mess with our turn meter in any way, uh, most importantly on this champion. So uh, Cycle of Revenge, another one, right? We don't want to get that if you do decide to go defense tree on this champion. But I think this is totally safe to go with these masteries. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of. I guess you could go Evil Eye again. It's not gonna. It's not gonna matter against Clan Boss, uh, but I guess Eagle Eye would probably be better than the Cycle of Violence in other areas. Uh, but other than that, the masteries are are pretty good there. Uh, okay, guys, let's go ahead and and give her a run where she's known for. Let's give her a run in Clan Boss. And keep in mind, she's a campaign farmable champion. So what you can do is honestly, is go to campaign, go to stage six, and then just keep farming until you get a bunch of heiresses. It's gonna take you a while, but what you can do is, instead of farming stage 12-3 on Brutal, just switch to 12-3 Brutal, uh, or excuse me, to 6-3 Brutal, right? Switch. So farm, it's not gonna make that big of a difference experience-wise, right? And then, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be somewhat significant, but what you can do is, is farm here instead and get a bunch of dupes of Eris, and you don't have to waste your rare skill tomes. You can just use the dupes to book her out, you know, if you want to, especially if you're, you know, a free-to-play player, someone who really trying to be super efficient with your resources and your time, and etc. Uh, rare skill tomes, they're kind of hard to get too, you know, everybody talks about legendary and epics, and truthfully, oftentimes, I have more epics, almost all the time, I have more epic skill tomes on my account than I do rares, uh, it just depends on where you are and what you're doing on your account, anyway, guys, let me go ahead and show you my clan boss team, I've showed you this team before, I think, on a Demitha guy, probably, I've already done my keys for Ultra Nightmare, the best thing about this clan boss team is you can use it on any difficulty, Brutal Nightmare, Ultra Nightmare, doesn't matter, you can use it, I can auto in, uh, there's no setup involved in, like, it's full auto, right, and it's neutral to every single affinity. That's why I love it so much. Most of all, what I love about this team is every champion that I use here, I don't use anywhere else outside of Faction Wars. So I can use these builds and these speed tunes, and it's not going to mess or affect anything else. I'm not muling their gear or swapping their gear around, anything like that. So regardless of what team you use, as you approach the end game, we don't have the luxury of doing that in the beginning of the game. In the middle of the game, we're trying to just develop champions for faction wars, et cetera, et cetera, tag team. Uh, do you develop really three full teams for tag team? I don't know. Uh, and uh, and Hydra, right? But after that, you can start thinking about, okay, maybe we'll have a specialist team for clan boss, you know? Uh, anyway, uh, I lost Wi-Fi connection uh, when I was pulling into my driveway, so I had to use two keys, but it is a one-key team, right? It, to be very, very clear, it's way less than a one-key team, meaning... This team right here, I'll show you the whole breakdown right now. This team, I can get, you know, consistently over 110 million damage uh, per key on Ultra Nightmare. I've shown that so many times on this team. Very competent. Uh, probably way more than that damage now because I haven't checked it in a while because I always just stop when I get to the uh, the one key, right? Uh, so anyway, this is going to be Nightmare. And again, it's, it's a very basic team. Uh, Jintoro is totally a flex position on this team. Frankly, so is Fushan. The thing with Fushan, though, is you need the speed aura. So he is kind of hard to replace in that regard. Uh, but we have Demitha. Let me show you the team. We have Fushan at 192 speed, not using his A2. We don't need the, the, the A2 there, obviously. Uh, we have Demitha at 292, prioritizing the A3 and then the A2. We have Eris at 261, as you guys know. She's coming in. You have to put priority on A, on the on the on the A2, excuse me. I don't know why, but it does mess up. Or at least some some of you guys have told me that it messes up. And I remember watching another video at one point and they're like, dude, you gotta go in there and do that, or it's just gonna screw up the run. Okay, sounds good. She only has one other active ability or A1, so it doesn't make sense that she would wouldn't go for it, but whatever. Uh better safe than sorry. Gentoro is a beast. I have him at 154 speed, a super, super slow Gentoro. I see some people using Gentoro, just as a random side note, if you happen to have him. I see people using him, uh, shutting off the blood freeze, shutting off the A2. I don't understand why. You get so much more damage not shutting off the A2. Uh, you can't st uh, steal turn meter, but you can decrease the cooldown of Oni's Rage by one turn if the target is immune to turn meter. On Oni's Rage, we're attacking five times instead of one on every fourth use of this skill. So we like to have the cooldown reduced, right? Plus we're pl placing the big version of decreased defense and weaken on this ability as well. All on a three turn cooldown. And then Seeker's at 179. That's right, a slow Seeker build uh, with uh, prioritizing his A1 as the opener. So that's it, guys. That's the squad. 
Uh, let me go ahead and do a run with you guys. You'll kind of get the gist of things. Again, it's full auto here after you do the team setup. Let me make myself a little bit smaller so I'm not blocking our girl on our big debut here on the channel. All right, so it takes us a turn or two to kind of get into the swing of things. You can see she's counterattacking. She's landing those weak versions of poisons. And I'll tell you what, man, at the end of the day here, I'm not going to, I'm going to stop when I one key it, but you'll see that the damage is actually pretty significant for a, you know, support champion in a lot of ways. Uh, she's going to cleanse off that stun and then we repeat everything. That's it. So you saw basically everything that she's bringing to the table. Let's watch one more round here. Phantom touch proc, right? So we get the extra damage from phantom touch. We come in here again, a one hitting for 58 K plus a war master proc there too. She counterattacks when allies hit. She comes right back in and removes the stun from Jintoro. That is the beauty and the magic of Eris. You can see that she's actually doing quite a bit on this team. Increased speed she's responsible for. She's responsible for the cleanse. She's responsible for a lot of damage with the po between the poisons and obviously the counterattacks and the War Master, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, guys, I'll be right back when this run is done. Let's see. Uh, let's see how this team uh, does. All right, guys, I let it go a little bit long there. Got a phone call, no big deal. So we got fifty million in twenty-four turns. Hey, that's not too bad, is it? Let's see how Eris did for a support champion. Not too bad with ten million damage. Really, just kind of almost hanging up there with Jintoro and Fushan as a very nice cleanser, increased speed, damage dealing hybrid for your clan boss teams, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Keep the champion requests coming here on the channel. Much love, and as always, take care, guys.